vertical asymptotes. The first thing I want to talk about is arrow notation with this. So we have this X and we have this arrow and then we have A with a little plus sign. And we read that in math. We read that as X approaches A from the right. So X, X, and this is approaches A and this is from the right. The plus sign is from the right. That's because numbers bigger than something right on the right side of it and so a plus sign means well if it's if it's a plus it's bigger than a right so then we're going to say from the right all right so then what if i change that plus to a minus it says x arrow a with a little minus that we actually read that x approaches a and then the minus sign right if you if you a subtract something that's going to be from the left or less than it right so x approaches a from the left all right in each one of these cases where we're you know what is x doing is it approaching a from the right or from the left then we have x approaches what infinity this is infinity uh, one of the things that when you write infinity if you have trouble writing infinity turn your paper sideways or either write what i call a snowman infinity except you know snowman h right side up a snowman infinity has fallen over so but either way, make sure your infinity is horizontal, all right? So then it's read X approaches infinity, which means that X increases without bound. If X is going to infinity, right? The X, X value is, is going all the way out to infinity, okay? X increases without bound. And then finally, what if X with an arrow and a negative infinity? So that's read X approaches negative infinity, and that means that X decreases without bound right it's going all the way out to negative infinity as far as it can go and further because infinity and negative infinity are directions they are not numbers they are directions okay so the line x equals a is a vertical asymptote of the graph of a function f if if f of x that's the y value increases or decreases without bound as x approaches a that's why we went over the arrow notation talking about x approaching a from the right the left that kind of thing so if f of x if the function f increases or decreases without bound as you get closer to a vertical asymptote some value a the line x equals a and remember um, i use vux and hoy vertical line is undefined slope and x equals a number horizontal line zero slope y equals a number so if it's x equals a that's a vertical line so let's look at some examples right here Notice my red dotted line here, right? This red line here dotted here. It is my vertical, or it is a the line x equals a. So if I have the graph of f in green here, and it's coming up and, and getting closer and closer, and look, look at my arrow. My arrow says it goes up forever, right? That means the function of f, f of x does what? It increases without bound. It approaches infinity. So at the bottom here, as x approaches a from the right, so... We're on the right side of A. We're coming in towards A. We're moving to the left. The function is doing what? It's going up towards infinity. It's increasing without bound. That's the definition of a vertical asymptote. So that's one example coming from the right there. What if we come from the other direction? What if we come from the left? Well, guess what? Again, in green, I have my function F here, and guess what it's doing? It's going up forever, and it's coming into the, the, whatever A is. Right now I have A looks like as a positive number. It doesn't matter where it's at. It could be 1, 7, 15, 1 half, negative square root of 3. It can be anything. Okay. So as X approaches A from the left, right, from the left, we're moving to the right, but we're coming from the left. Then F of X is going off to infinity. It increases without bound. All right. Well, what if it goes down and decreases without bound? Well, that's the same thing. Again, we're coming in from the right. So we're heading to the left. When you come from the right, you're going to the left, right? We're, we're from the right. We're going towards our vertical asymptote denoted by the red dotted lines, how we typically denote them as dotted lines, not necessarily red or blue or green, okay? And then as X approaches A from the right, F of X decreases without bound, okay? It decreases without bound. It goes to negative infinity. And then finally, you can also come from A from the left and F decreases without bound it goes down again to negative infinity it decreases without bound so these are your four different scenarios of vertical asymptotes now they the curve may not look like my green curve here it may have other shapes but as it gets close to the asymptote we call it hugging the or i call it hugging the asymptote right it hugs it but it actually never touches it, it never gets there 
And I know that's hard for us to fathom with our minds because we're like, well, that thing goes up forever but never gets to that line. I mean, that, how's that a function? It wouldn't pass a vertical line test. Yeah, it works. It always gets closer to that line point by point and never has a point right above another one. And it does that forever. It's just that's hard for us to fathom. Okay? But it, that's what happens. So as note, as X approaches A from either the left or the right, the function approaches infinity or negative infinity. And all that says is, as we get closer and closer to that letter A, or that number that, that's represented by A, then the function is either increasing without bound, which is this part, that's increase without bound, and this is decrease without bound. Okay? So that's what's happening there on those. All right? So, look, practically, how do we find vertical asymptotes? Because that's what we need to know, right? We're, you're probably watching this because you have a test coming up on how to find vertical asymptotes. Well, guess what? Here's how you find them. To find vertical asymptotes and or holes, so we're going to lump these two things together. And so sometimes a graph doesn't have a vertical asymptote. It just, it's bebopping along. The graph is just bebopping along, and then all of a sudden it just skips a spot, just one point. It has a hole, okay? So one of the things about technology, technology doesn't show this really well. Now, some of the newer things may that I'm not familiar with, but a lot of graphing calculators, it doesn't look like a hole's there. It just bebops along, and, you know, because of the resolution, you can't tell it's there. But there's a hole, okay? But the way you find vertical asymptotes and holes is set the denominator, the bottom, equal to zero, and solve for x, all right? If the x value all also makes the top, the numerator, zero, then that x value is a hole. So whenever you find everything that makes the bottom zero, it either makes the top zero or it doesn't. And the top's the numerator. If you find something that makes the denominator the bottom zero, then one of two things has to happen. It also makes the top, the numerator, zero, or it doesn't. There is no other option. It can't make it something else. It's either zero or not something, or not zero. So then if the x value does not make the numerator zero, then the x value is a vertical asymptote. So I use this analogy with buckets a lot. So let's just look at my analogy with buckets. All right, maybe it'll help some. So I have this bucket here. And in my bucket, this is everything that makes the denominator equal to zero, okay? The bottom of the denominator equals zero. And let's just pretend that we had this big function and we, and we were working with it and we could do it perfect and flawlessly. And we figured out that zero, two, three, and seven are in my bucket. Those are the things that make the denominator or the bottom zero. All the work I did to get that, whatever it was, this is what I got, all right? And then I say, okay, wait, I got these two buckets down here that say, okay, and I make the numerator equal to zero, or and I'm, I don't make the numerator equal to zero, okay? One of those two things is true. I either make the numerator zero or I don't. So the way we find the things that make the denominator zero, by the way, are just like vertical, I mean, just like domain. That's the same thing we do in domain, right? We take the denominator and say it's not equal to zero and restrict those values. These are the restricted values from the domain, period. That's what they are. They're the same thing. So if you're not familiar with that, go watch the video on domain of rational functions. All right? So here's what we do. Once we find these values, then we go to those values and we walk up to zero. And, hey, zero, zero, do you make the numerator zero? Do you make the top zero? And zero goes, nope, I don't make the top zero. So then guess what? We take zero and we pour it over here in this bucket. Boom. Okay, zero, you go over there because you don't make the top, the numerator zero. Then we go to two and say, hey, two, do you make the numerator zero? And two goes, hey, yes, I make the top zero as well. So then we say, okay, two, you make the numerator zero. So we'll just bring you right over here and drop you in this bucket. Okay. Well, guess what? We're going to ask the same question to three and seven. And we go, hey, three, do you make the numerator zero? And three goes, yep, I sure do. So we say, okay, you go over here with two. You, you, you drop, uh-oh, too low for my bucket. All right. You go down there in that bucket. All right. And then we go to seven. Hey, seven, do you make the numerator zero? And seven goes, no, nah, man, I don't make the top zero. So then we bring seven and we pull him outside the bucket and we put him over here in this bucket. Okay. So now we have two different buckets down here. One, they, they all came from the denominator being zero. They all had to be in that bucket to start with. If they didn't go in that bucket, they can't be in these buckets. So then we separate this bucket, the big bucket of denominator equals zero out to top zero or not zero. Okay. So for the numerator equaling zero, this, this, is what we call holes, okay? Notice what it says here. If the x value always, also, not always, also makes the top zero, the numerator zero, then that's a hole, okay? So here, denominator zero, also numerator zero, hole. If it doesn't make the top zero, it made the bottom zero, then that's our vertical asymptotes, okay? And that's what this one here says, okay? So that's my visual there, my little analogy on, hey, 
This is how I distinguish between a whole and a vertical asymptote. But if something makes the denominator zero, it must be either a whole or a vertical asymptote. And the way I determine which one is which is numerator versus, you know, numerator being zero or not. Okay. So let's get rid of my analogy. All right. Do I have to factor to identify vertical asymptotes or holes? Now, I teach out of books that say yes. Um, it's not absolutely necessary. However, you are solving the denominator for sure, right? I told you that's what you're doing. You're finding all the things that make the denominator zero. So, yeah, you may have to do something other than factor to do that. And, you know, if your teacher does that to you, then I'm sorry, because it's going to be hard if you have to do quadratic formula to do that. It's going to be awful. All right. But that's fine if they want to. It's their class. Okay. All right. But look, if factoring works, there is no better way. You want to factor it. All right. So, yes, in that sense, you want it factored. Also, it is not essential to factor, factor the numerator. The problem is you can get yourself in a, in a pretty good pickle if you don't. For example, let's say that in your denominator, you get this factor, 3x plus 5, just whatever it happens to be with some other stuff. And in the numerator, you get 3x squared plus 5x. Now, this is a pretty simple example of this, but still nobody wants to do this. If I set this equal to zero, right, I get negative five thirds. If I don't factor the numerator, then I've got to plug this number in to both those X's, right? Who wants to have, if you can do that, you probably could have factored it a lot easier. Okay. So yes, you should factor it, but is it completely necessary? I mean, technically no, but it works a lot better if you factor both the numerator and denominator when you're working with vertical asymptotes and holes. You're not going to do anything with the top other than, or the numerator and say, hey, does it share a factor? Okay. If things, right, if you factor something and they share factors, then that shared factor makes both of them zero. That will, so shared factors will be holes. And if it just makes the bottom zero, just the denominator, and it's not shared with the top, the numerator, then it's a vertical asymptote. All right. So that's how I distinguish a shared factors or not. All right. So here, Let's go on here, and, and I want you to note something. The graph of a function can never, ever, 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 ever cross a vertical asymptote. Okay, so if you're, if you're graphing something for your algebra class one day, and the teacher says, hey, graph this, and you start graphing, and you go, oh, I got a vertical asymptote at 2, and you, you go x equals 2, and you got your little dotted line, and then your graph goes across it, right? You got, you're over here, and you're like, okay, I got, I got my dotted line right here for my asymptote, and I'm just bebobbing along, and then I go like that. No, you cannot cross right here. That cannot happen. No, 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 no. Okay, can't happen, all right? That's where your teacher's pen explodes on your paper, right? Cannot happen. So it can never, just remember that, it can never cross a vertical asymptote. So how do we find this? Let's find some vertical asymptotes, okay? Let's find some vertical asymptotes, if there are any, and holes if there are any. Remember, the only thing that can be one or the other is things that make the denominator the bottom zero. So if I look at this first one, can I factor this anymore no this one is already factored here that can't be done anymore that can't be done anymore so I want to say okay denominator equal to zero so x minus three equals zero so x I'm going to add three to both sides right don't skip that step and what is x equal three so that's in my big bucket that I did earlier and then look so here the three can either be a whole or a vertical asymptote it can't be both because it either makes the top zero of the numerator or it doesn't one or the other. Does three make the top zero of the numerator? No. If I plug three in, I get three. And also, I can look at it. Do I have x minus three up top? If I did, then I would have a shared factor. I don't have a shared factor. So then this, this numerator not equal to zero. So then vertical asymptote is x equals three. Okay. And here, if you want to say, okay, what about holes? None. Okay, so I actually do that on my on my test. I, I say something like vertical, and I put it even a, in parentheses. So if you have more than one, we have a pluralization there, all right? And I have two boxes here, and you know my students will go x equals three, and then they put none here, all right? And I require them to put none. I know I'm so mean. All right. So let's go ahead and, in fact, I want to go ahead and, and set that up for this next one. Let's go ahead and come over here and say vertical asymptotes and holes. All right. Well, actually, let's just do it with a box. Let's just have a box here. All right, let's see what we have for, for these things. Okay. So when we work this problem, when we go through and say, okay, 
what about this problem? X over X squared plus 3. Well, I got to find out first where the denominator equals 0. That's the first thing I got to do. So X squared plus 3 equals 0. I can't factor that. In fact, that's the sum of squares. It doesn't give you any real numbers, okay? You can't factor X squared plus 3. If you try the quadratic formula, you're going to get imaginary numbers here, okay? That's not real numbers. So nothing, no real number makes that equal to 0 when it's the sum of squares. So then I have nothing that makes the denominator equal to 0. So does it matter what makes the top 0? No, because remember, it has to make the bottom 0 the denominator to even be one or the other. So if I don't find anything, then guess what? Both of these things are none. There are no vertical asymptotes, no holes here, because there was nothing, no value at all, that made the denominator zero. And so here is an example of where we have a rational function, we have x's in the denominator, we have a fraction with x's in the bottom of the denominator, and nothing made the bottom zero, the denominator zero. So there's nothing left out of my domain here, there's no vertical asymptotes, there's no holes, and that's okay, sometimes that happens. All right, so let's look at some more of these. Let's look at some more of these, all right? So right here, again, looking for Vertical asymptotes and holes, so I want to know where the denominator equals 0. So x times x minus 3 equals 0. Hmm. Hmm. This is already factored. That's nice. So then I just take each one. And by the way, this is one of the few times I don't put not equals to because when I find the vertical asymptote, I actually want x equals that number because vertical asymptotes are lines. I didn't say that before. Let me go back and just say that real quick. If I look back here, this is only correct if you put x equals. If you put the number 3, that is not a vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptotes are lines. Therefore, it requires the x equals. All right? So, uh, and y'all know I'm mean. I count off if you don't put it. Okay? So, X, so x equals 0, or x minus 3 equals 0. So here we're going to add 3 to both sides. So x equals 3. So here I have two things in my big bucket, 0 and 3. Do I have any shared factors? No, x is not shared up top. x minus 3 is not shared up top. This is x plus 3. That's all one factor. So it's not shared, but I could check it if I plug in 0. 0 plus 3 is not 0, and then 3 plus 3 is 6. That's not 0. So neither one of them make it zero, so then both of them are what? So this is, this is numerator is not equal to zero, and this is also numerator not, you don't have to write all these things down, but that's what I'm keeping up with in my head. The numerator is not equal to zero on either one of those, so then when I come down here to fill in my vertical asymptotes and holes, okay? Well, I guess I keep putting the colons there, but I want to have my little answer box here, all right? So let me see if I can fix this real quick. So then vertical asymptotes are going to be x, oops, I keep, x equals 0 and x equals 3 because both of them don't make the numerator 0 and then holes, none. Holes, none. And notice I put x equals 0 and then I put a comma and then I also put x equals 3. I do not allow my students to do this because x equals 0 is a line, and then they need to have the number 3. That's not a line. So both of these things are their own individual vertical asymptotes, so then I require x equals on both numbers here, okay? And I think that's the proper way to do this. And then on this one here, again, where does the denominator equal zero? And I told you it would be good to have it what? Let me just do this down here. It would be good to have it factored. So you know what? Let's go ahead and factor this because I think so far, factored, factored, factored. Everything's been factored so far. This one's not factored. So before I worry about denominator equals zero, let's factor it, all right? So here, again, this is list method, x and x. And we read it, factors of 24 that subtract to give me two. Well, factors of 24, 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8 are 4 and 6. And 4 and 6 subtract to give me 2, so put in here 4 and 6. 
and the bigger number gets the first sign. That's how it always works when a minus is last. So bigger number six gets a plus, four gets a minus. Down here in the denominator, we have x and x again. And same thing, it's a one in the front with three terms. It's list method, factors of six that add to give me seven. Okay, so one and six or two and three. Well, one and six add to give me seven. So I'm gonna put in here six and one, doesn't matter what order. And then this says both, they're both positive. So both positive, so plus and plus. So now when I want to go denominator equal to zero, I say x plus 6 times what? And really, you could even skip this step. You can say, well, Mr. Guest, I already have it factored. Why can't I just write? You can. You can just go straight to this. So then we're going to subtract 6 here. x cannot be negative 6. We're going to subtract 1. x cannot be negative 1 or is negative 1, I should say. So those are my two possibilities either as a whole, a vertical asymptote, or both one or the other, okay? But nothing else can be either one. Only, only these can be vertical asymptotes and holes. So do I have any shared factors? And when I say shared factor, x plus 6 is shared, right? That tells you right there it's shared. If I plug that in the top, the numerator, it's going to make it 0. So any shared factor makes the numerator equal to 0 as well. And this makes the numerator, oops, that's why I teach math. Not equal to zero. All right? So then if I have my vertical asymptotes and holes here, oops, then we said the shared factor was x plus 6. So what came from that? x equals negative 6, and that is my whole and then my vertical asymptote, my vertical asymptote is x equals negative 1 because that makes the denominator zero but not the numerator so that had one vertical asymptote and one hole the one over here in yellow had two vertical asymptotes all right so hopefully this helps you when you try to find vertical asymptotes and holes and understanding what to do and how to do it and that kind of thing and hopefully the bucket analogy helped and whatnot so good luck as you endeavor